This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. <laughs> BYU Sports Nation is live, your day-to-day play-by-play in Studio B, presented by the BYU Store. Official outfitter, BYU fans everywhere. Oh, my gosh. What did we witness last night? It is Wednesday, November 17th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jeremy Jordan, teamed up with a man who's a little sleepy from being at the airport at 2 a.m. to welcome the team home with the Rock, look, Jason Shepard. Look, when a team that goes into, let's be honest, it was a home game because Eugene, Portland, fairly close. It's certainly more of a home game for Oregon than it was for BYU in terms of proximity to the campus. Yeah, yeah. Now, Nin- you may disagree minutes. in terms of fans because we know BYU fans travel. But when an, un- travel, they just live there. <laughs> when an unranked team goes in and just dominates the 12th ranked team in the country, 81-49, that is cause for celebration. That is cause for staying up late. And that is cause for showing up at the Provo Airport to say what's up to the BYU basketball team after a fantastic win last night i was not there i was really not there i was yeah, asleep yeah yeah so was i um congratulations to the team what a win we're gonna break it down on the show but yeah we're seeing video on boe tv of uh from the daily universe at the airport oh my gosh what a, what an amazing game by the way have you ever done it to the airport thing with anything yeah, i did after this uh the sweet 16 uh going to the sweet 16 did that okay yeah the only time I've ever did, I've got done the gone to the airport was uh, when the Jazz went to the NBA Finals after beating Houston in 97. Yeah. Yeah. I met them at the airport, yep. uh, that one. And it wasn't the Salt Lake Airport. It was like the one down the road from yes, me yeah. and where you grew up in, yes, Kearns, yes. um, in West Jordan there, which is crazy. Okay, show lineup, massive show. Let's go, baby. Uh, the big win at Oregon, our reaction, the national reaction was incredible. Alex Barcella will join us in studio. Hey, man of the hour, man. Did Jeff Goodman overreact when he put BYU at 8 this morning in hoops? We'll discuss. The latest from the Jets on if Zach Wilson will play Saturday. Uh, And we'll get you ready for BYU women's hoops coming up against Arizona State at the top of the hour on BYU TV. Big game, BYU versus the Pac-12. I think we know what's going to happen there. Kristen Kozlowski's convo with Paisley Johnson pregame. And Spencer Linton will join us as well. So it's a loaded show. Let's go, baby. Let's hit some headlines. Left wing night, BYU 15-40 to go, leading by 20. Traore, right wing, Barcelo, windmill, drive, reverse lay-in, and the foul! Alex Barcelo will shoot for a three-point play. 46-24, BYU by a game-high 22. Ah, uh, what a night for BYU basketball. They dominated 12th-ranked Oregon last night, 81-49 in Portland. The Cougars never trailed and improved to 3-0 on the season. This is uh, the first time under head coach Mark Pope that BYU has started the season 3-0. and Alex Barcelo tied his career high with 25 points. And as Jeremy mentioned, he is set to join the show coming up in about 15 minutes. Besides all of the excitement with the actual game, BYU benefited significantly in the uh, in the rankings uh, as well. BYU jumped 19 spots overnight from 39 to 20 in the Ken Palm rankings. Also, Joe Lenardi published his updated seed lines this morning. BYU is 28. BYU back in action Saturday night at the Marriott Center hosting Central Methodist. Football remains number 14 in the college football playoff rankings after a bye last week. Past opponent Baylor moves up to 11 after beating Oklahoma. And Utah is up to 23. Utes and Ducks this weekend, by the way. Four future Big 12 teams are in the top 14, equaling the SEC. How about that? Tyler Algier has been named a semifinalist for the Doak Walker Award given to the nation's top running back. Three finalists will be announced coming up on November 23rd. Certainly congratulations goes out to Tyler Algier. Also, Algier was named to the College Football Performance Awards midseason watch list, which I thought would have been a couple of weeks ago. Apparently not. Uh, Algier. <laughs> yeah, wait a minute. Look, the look the the important part is that Algier is on it currently with uh, 1,167 rushing yards and his 17 rushing touchdowns tied for the most in FBS. How about that? Just incredible stuff. ESPN's New York Jets reporter Rick uh, Rich Chimini reports the Jets will start Joe Flacco this week, quarterback. As Zach Wilson is not 100%. Robert Sala says he is day to day, so we'll see when Zach Wilson returns. 
Yeah, we kind of all thought it was happening this week, and uh, looks like it will be postponed a More little bit. More time he's not playing with the Jets and <laughs> still getting paid, I'm okay with it's that. It's better for his overall yeah. health. Uh, yeah, this season while they've been. Yeah, his yeah. mental health and physical health. I'm not health. saying in the future. I'm saying right now. Yeah, for right now, yeah. And uh, we've mentioned it a couple of times. Women's basketball has a matinee matchup with Arizona State at the Marriott Center today. You can tune in at 1 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. So immediately following BYU Sports Nation. Who's sidelining that? Uh, that would be me. So oh, as awesome. soon as I'm done, boom, right over to the Marriott Center. I know. Center. I'm doing it in a minute by myself. All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. Okay, normally we ask a question here, then we debate. Uh, today it's pure reaction to the game and to the national reaction. It was incredible. Um, an amazing win. The most ever by BYU against a ranked team. Um, there are a million superlatives that we can go over there. Um, number 12, Oregon. BYU wins by 32. <laughs> what did you think of what happened here? Look, it was one of those ones I just had a, had, a, had a smile on my face the entire game for, for several reasons. First of all, BYU goes out to the 6 nothing lead, and both teams for the first couple of minutes couldn't score at all. And then BYU gets out 6 nothing. Yeah. Then Oregon comes back, ties it up at 6. And so you're thinking, okay, well, this is kind of what we expected. This is going to be – Hopefully BYU can hang yes, in this just, game, make it interesting. Yes, you make it interesting. Yes. That's what I was hoping. From that point on – BYU never allowed Oregon to ever get back in this. They got to within, I believe, 17 at one point once the lead got above 20. Oh, no. I, I joked to my friend I was watching with Justin. I was like, oh, no, it got under 20. <laughs> so it was just that I was in awe all night long of just how in control BYU was from the get-go. They never trailed. As we mentioned, their lead hovered right around 20 for most of the second half. And every time Oregon got something going, and by something I mean maybe like a, a four, four run, run. Four -oh run yeah. BYU came right back and hit big shot after big shot. Barcelo was unbelievable, tying his career high with 25 points. But a lot of this started on the defensive end. BYU defensively was fantastic. You had great games from Foos, who is a fan favorite already. He is good. And he is so raw. And, and everything he everything he gets, whether it's points, rebounds, whatever, it's all just raw talent and hustle. Imagine what he's going to be like in another year or two when he gets a little more refined. But then you had Spencer Johnson with a really good game. Tijon Luke is probably his best game. Seneca Knight, another good game. Yep. Trey Stewart got in the game, scored his first points in the regular season. Spencer Johnson, er, everybody. It was just a, a total team effort. And as much as we're going to focus on the offense. Play of the game here. Yes, Spencer the behind Johnson the back. To that, was George. Like, that was like you and the, the 5 a.m. basketball games that just, you played before. Just buckets minus And I meant the dunk. Yeah. The oh, other guy was, was the Gideon pass. George. You were the dunk. Oh, yeah. A, a left-handed layup was yeah. like a dunk and pick up. Look, from, from start to finish, we'll focus on the offense because they score 81. But it, honestly, it was the defense that was probably the most impressive thing. BYU's defense was off the charts. BYU didn't even need Alex Parcello to score a point in this game. <laughs> You're right. By the way, Alex's career high is 29, so he was just short. But one of his best games ever. Our stat of the day is unbelievable. And BYU made national, national news yesterday because BYU owned the night. Um which is Nostris Nocturnus, as we've talked about on the show, which brings us to a stat of the day. It's the BYU Sports... It's the BYU Sports Nation stat of the day. ESPN Stats and Info. BYU is the first unranked team to be the top 15 team away from home by 30-plus since November 29th, 1993, when UConn beat Virginia. Are you kidding me? What BYU did last <laughs> night is one of the greatest BYU men's basketball games ever. I'm not sure that BYU will top that moment. Let me explain. Beating a top 12 team by that margin and having the reaction, that's incredible. If BYU beats Gonzaga, yes. If BYU goes to the Sweet 16, I'm not sure they'll get the same amount of attention as they got last night. I mean, that was incredible. So enjoy this. This was amazing. And now BYU is going to be in the top 25 next week. I dare say the top 20. I, I, I think BYU will I would be, be shocked if they're not in the top 20. 19 see, on I, Monday. I'm guessing 17. Oh, I am guessing they come in at 17. I'll go 17 plus. How about that? Okay. <laughs> well, now we know it won't happen. <laughs> it happens. McWorld, it could happen. There's lots of reaction to get to. Let's talk about it. John Rothstein, CBS Sports. Things you didn't think you'd tweet. BYU over Oregon by 30. <laughs> 32, Jason. I still can't get over that BYU beat Oregon by a Jimmer's worth. By the way, does this mean that BYU basketball should go to the Rose Bowl? <laughs> yes. 
Again, BYU to the Pac-12. We'll get to that in a second. Matt Norlander, BYU 81, Oregon 49, final. Holy crap. <laughs> that, one, that one made me laugh. It really did. John Wilner, who's been outspokenly, he picked BYU to go 0-5 against the Pac-12. Yeah. This year. BYU's thought no, thought Arizona was going to beat BYU football. in the uh, yeah, opener. That was a good one, John. But you're funny. <laughs> Uh, he's going to have a Netflix series, all <laughs> comedy about the Pac-12. <laughs> on the bright side, from John Wilner, for the Pac-12, only one football game and one basketball game left against BYU. Um, so BYU-USC next week, and at the same time, almost within an hour, BYU at Utah in men's basketball. Yes. That's going to be crazy. Adam Rittenberg, Pac-12 has st- of ESPN. Pac-12 has stopped playing BYU in sports. Too painful. <laughs> <laughs> the great irony in this, by the way, is that Alex Barcelo, former Pac-12 player himself at Arizona, did the destruction against... Oregon, it, the, the development, and it, I want to be Alex Barcelo in my life. Let me explain why. Sometimes I feel like I'm a three-point scorer, and then sometimes I want to be the 25-point scorer. It's the right people, the right situation, the right fiancé and Zoe. Zoe's in the house. What's Look, up, you Zoe? do what you need to do when you need to do yes, it. Yes, you do. We'll talk to uh, Alex coming up. Gavin Baxter, uh, why road games feeling like home games? Cougar Nation, ridiculous. Yes. this is Cougar Nation, okay. BYU was incredible before the Big 12 thing. It was. We know it. Big 12 BYU is on another level, bro. In all the it sports. has raised Look at the stakes. All the everything, sports. everything's changed. Everybody has leveled up a little bit. It's been, or a lot of bit. It's been incredible. Okay. Tosh McIntosh. This was funny. This one really gets me. This Does BYU great. TV get to replay tonight's BYU versus Oregon game, or are they not allowed to air TV mature content? Hello. Too violent. It was too violent against Ducks. PETA has been informed. I tried there. to find gifts of Ducks last night, but then I'm like, I don't, I don't need, you know, PETA. You're going into a strange space. Yeah, right? just like, I don't, I don't need yeah. to go there. I don't need it. Mark Titus, uh, one of the big voices in college basketball. Win of the year in college basketball so far. Congrats to Coach Pope and the boys. I agree. Obviously, Seton Hall taking down number four Michigan on the road last night. Uh, on Juwan Howard's five-year contract extension day is a big win as well. But it's the 32 Yes. did it. The margin of victory is It's the 32, and it's incredible. the complete domination from start to finish. Oregon was never truly in this game, no. ever. And now you look at what BYU has done in the first three games. All three tourney teams from last year, all three will make the tourney this year, we think, in Cleveland State and San Diego State and BYU. And now you look at BYU and you go, oh, my gosh, is the ceiling higher than we thought for this group? They're going to be ranked in the top. 20 next week. It's very exciting. Boney Fuller. This one, this, <laughs> this one was great. I don't necessarily agree with this, but it's funny. <laughs> if you aren't able to watch, no spoilers, but we are letting kids from Linden play. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> uh, we love you, Casey Brown. Don't, it's all good. Uh, hey, at the show, San Diego State. Are you guys watching? By the way, I never did go back to check to see if uh, at the show SDSU responded oh, to this. Oh, there's plenty of salt over there. <laughs> Colin Chandler, how about them Cougs? That's right, Colin Chandler. That's right, future Cougar. Yep. Big 12, baby. Love oh, it. Oh, it was. I'm telling you, this is an all-time performance uh, from BYU. All-time. Just one of the greatest moments in BYU basketball history. Beating this team in the way they did. Okay, a couple other things. Largest margin of victory against a ranked team ever. Um, the fact that, you know, B- BYU goes on a neutral side. I wish this had been in Eugene, honestly. Um, even, even better, right? I can't stand that floor. To atone though. the overtime. I, I hate, their, I hate like their floor design. It is the most it's obnoxious. Rough. Normally, I like the Ducks. This is a guy that used to live in Portland, but, you know, last night was different. Um, BYU all over it. Okay, our question today. was the best thing about last night's BYU win over Oregon? This could be from the game. This could be outside the game, the reaction, anything. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. What was the best thing about last night's BYU win over Oregon? Jonathan Hawkinson on Twitter. The best thing about last night's BYU win over Oregon is that no one saw it coming. The momentum and potential of this team is sky high right now, so much so that rumor has it that the Oregon Duck mascot Puddles swam back to Eugene in his river of tears after the loss. I, For, I first think of all, felt is, like BYU is, was going to compete in this game. Yes. I don't think I, – we'll ask Alex Barcelo. <laughs> Did you see a 32-point win coming? I mean, that's incredible. Okay. The Oregon Duck mascot, is his name really Puddles? It's Puddles, yeah. Seriously. That's the real thing. Okay, I did not know that it was Puddles. Very funny Sports Center commercial where he's in an office looking longingly outside at other ducks. It's really <laughs> I, I know. I just never knew his name was Puddles. <laughs> Jordan Sotis on Twitter. The best thing about the win was that there wasn't anything fluky about it. Yes. You know, he completely dominated the boards, played great defense, shot the ball well. Even if Oregon was having a bad 
night. It was obvious BYU was just a better team. That's a great point yeah. that shouldn't be lost here is – BYU didn't like just happen to make uh, you know 19 threes or something. Yeah, it wasn't. It was oh well, domination. if Oregon had done that, no, it doesn't matter. BYU dominated this game. Certainly, BYU needed Alex Barcelo's points to get in position to continue that that avalanche that was the win. But if you took his points off the board, BYU still wins comfortably. But we don't want to take them off the we board. We would not. We would and, not do that. By the way, I love looking at this. In soccer, you always identify what was the game-winning goal. In baseball, you say, okay, game-winning hit or RBI. The game-winning shot by BYU came at the 14-49 point of the second half. That is the most ridiculous <laughs> thing I've ever seen in my life. Okay, continue to weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. All right, coming up, who will be ranked higher at this time next week, football or basketball? Great question. And the man of the hour, Alex Barcelo. Oh, getting it done last night. He's in studio. We'll talk about the game. This is BYU Sports Nation. Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork sells Ford vehicles, including the F-150, the pickup designed for work and play. Tim Daly Ford maintains a large inventory, providing more choices for selecting an F-150 with the power and engineering to carry and tow heavy loads. The F-150's design offers comfort, safety, and a range of options to choose from. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. Let's kick off AFR on BYU TV. What they did in that fourth quarter was not unexpected in my book. Everyone did their job perfectly, and it resulted in obviously a touchdown. Who knew that he had these kind of hands? And right at the snap of the football, they both go right downhill. And, and that was the end of that. <laughs> he, did, he, he knocked him down pretty quickly. BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. At the top of the hour, the 2-0 BYU women's basketball team hosts Arizona State in a matinee right here on BYU TV. Join Spencer Linton, Kristen Kozlowski, and myself for all the action, 1 Eastern on BYU TV and the app. We're live in Studio B with your day-to-day -day BYU sports play-by-play. -play. Jerem joined alongside Jason Shepard, who's going to run over, as he mentioned, to the Marriott Center right after this to go watch uh, you know, Amanda Barcelo and the uh, BYU women's basketball team. Her brother Alex happens to be a stud player on the BYU men's basketball team. You know him. He barely misses. 9 of 11 last night. Alex Barcelo joins us on the program. Alex, what's up, man? Uh, nothing much. Just, just Heck of a night last still, night. <laughs> it was a great night. I mean, guys played really well, and we're just happy to come home with a win. Have you gone to sleep yet? Not yet. No, I'm, Are you I'm serious? Still in the day. No, I've slept okay, a, you got few a few hours. hours? A few hours. Okay, yeah. good. I was like, oh, you probably have class or something today, right? Um, I mean, we were talking about how incredible this was. What was the game plan going in, and then how did it go that well? Because winning by 32 against anybody is hard. Yeah. It didn't happen against Cleveland State and San Diego State. It's difficult. Right. But at, uh, against Oregon and Portland, holy mackerel. I mean, Oregon, Oregon, they're a top 15 team. You know, they're they're very talented. They got a lot of a lot of great uh, guys on their team that can dribble the ball, get in the paint, create um, either for themselves or for other guys. They can shoot the ball from the perimeter really well. And then they crashed uh, the defensive boards. And that's one thing that we started off really well at doing was protecting the middle and then crashing the boards, which I think that's what propelled our energy throughout the game. And luckily we hit some shots and, and we just were able to keep up with that momentum going down the stretch. Without question, Alex, it's a statement victory. There's there's just no way around it. Everybody saw it. Everybody was talking about it. Literally everybody. Like the country was <laughs> talking about it. It was, awesome. it was unbelievable. <laughs> what, what kind of statement do you think that made about you guys and this program? 
I think it made a, a big statement for us. You know, obviously starting off 3-0 and um, the season like that, it's just it's incredible, an incredible feeling. Um, nothing that we didn't believe in ourselves, though, coming into the season, though, as, as a group, as a whole, players and coach and staff. You know, this is what we told ourselves. We're going to have to prove the country wrong again. You know, we, we don't get a lot of respect going into the season, but <clears throat> thankfully we, we were able to, to do that on, a, on the national level last night and just – kind of put the country on notice and I think it's a really big statement for our team nine of 11 25 points you're shooting at such a high clip right now so uh Jared Burson tweeted that the last 45 games you're shooting 51 percent from three no other player with that many attempts is within five percent what is it about your shot that go that is going so well right now Oh, I, don't, I don't know. I would say the reps. You know, Coach Fieger does a great job with me of just getting as many reps as I can in a day, um, being smart with it, whether we're, you know, on game day, the amount of reps that I shoot on a game day as opposed to after a game day, and then when I got a few days to prepare uh, throughout the week before a game. Uh, we're just always trying to trying to be the smartest with how many reps I'm getting up and are they game speed, um, are they shots that I'm getting in the game. And so I just all the credit goes to him uh, with how my shot's feeling right now. Sean Farnham on the ESPN broadcast. He had a fun conversation with you on Instagram, uh, which was great earlier in the day. He said that your release is the exact same no matter when and where you shoot it, except when a San Diego State guy fouls you, but they don't call it. <laughs> um, what, how, how do you maintain that? How do you make sure the release is the same wherever you are? Uh, I would say just those reps, you know, practicing at game speed when you're in a game, it just it feels the same. And, you know, trying to trying to have that confidence, knowing that my whole team trusts me to, to shoot the ball whenever and wherever. It's a it's a really great feeling to have your guys trust you and have your coaching staff trust you. So just kind of letting it fly when I want to get the ball in my hands. I think I probably know the answer to what number one is, but it, it, Correct me if I'm wrong. Zoe is the answer. <laughs> <laughs> Always. Where, where would last night's victory rank in terms of best wins during your time at BYU? I would rank it either one or two up there with that Gonzaga. That's what I. That's what I. Think. <laughs> yeah, probably yeah, that's two. Right. Probably two. Right. Yeah, it's, it's right I mean, there. Right. Yes, one and two. Yeah. Yep. It's just teams from the Northwest. Yeah. That's 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 how we roll. No. Okay. So so tell me what. Obviously, after a win like that, where people see it, everybody's just totally geeked out. Take me through what it's like. Who do you hear from afterwards? And I'm not talking about just, like, fans. Like, other players. What, what's that like? Because I assume you're either getting texts, social media. What, what, who are the types of people you hear from after a game like that? Man, uh, old coaches, old friends from back home. We try to tell each other just to stick off of social media, but we also need to be building our brand. So, you know, kind of throwing a picture or two out there or saying something, kind of tweeting something out. But, to a um, certain local credit union. <laughs> <laughs> Matthew is part of our family as well, which is awesome. But, yeah, I mean, just we, we really try to enjoy the moment, though. Like flying on the plane back, kind of we don't have Wi-Fi on the plane. It's just kind of we're all – trying to talk together, trying to build that connection, keep building that chemistry. And it's fun, you know. It's definitely a lot more fun going home with a W. But uh, just trying to communicate with each other and be like, oh, you know, I like this from the game. Or, hey, did you see this? Or did, did you guys actually see this moment when Foose fell down and they got up and blocked this guy? And it was just incredible, you know, just kind of reliving the moment of, of the wins um, that we get. It's, it's a special feeling. So that, that's probably mostly what we try to do but yeah definitely I hear from a lot of people from back home usually which is it's great to hear that you know lots of love how is NIL going for you it's going really well thankfully I mean it's a it's definitely a new world to every one of us just kind of navigating it but it's it's uh giving me a lot of good experience knowing kind of how to read through a contract uh, no matter how long it is I'm not the greatest reader or the fastest reader but reading through a contract knowing what questions to ask when I'm negotiating with a company it's it's been really fun for me so you talked about defense and you know and and we said this in the first segment you know I had mentioned like we're gonna all focus on the scoring the 81 points but the fact that that the defense was as dominant as it was holding a team that was averaging about 87 to 49 and shooting as low as they did. That's really the story. And I know coaches will always say they want their team to be a defensive first team. Is BYU now a defensive team first? I think so. You know, we got guys one through five who can guard whoever, can, can catch the move, can protect middle, um, and then we can go rebound. And I think that's what, where our re energy really started was, you know, Oregon's a team where if they, they shoot from the perimeter or they get middle and uh, they miss a shot, they're all crashing. They're used to grabbing the rebounds and finishing on a, on a second, second shot attempt. But we were, we were able to, to hold them 
from that with with first few minutes of the game and I think that's what really helped us and then we were able to protect middle and uh, we were just able to keep that momentum going but definitely everybody can guard one through five I think on this team what was the play of the game for you because we've been showing the foos block where literally he falls down just for a degree of difficulty he didn't even need to do it and then he gets back up blocks the guy's shot Spencer Johnson behind the back to Gideon George by the way 45 seconds of highlights on Sports Center right wow night. for a Tuesday night college basketball game. that's pretty <laughs> wow. good I would say Foose's play was probably my favorite play of the game. He's just – I don't think he realizes how good he is right now. And it is, it's, it's, it's incredible. He's going off all raw talent yes. right now. Yes, it's incredible. But he's just willing to learn. Every day he steps into practice, he's just so willing to learn. And I think that's why he's doing so well right now. There was another dude from Mali in Oregon. Did you hear any – uh, you know, native uh, language no, uh, I didn't. exchange. Oh, I was hoping there'd be a little <laughs> trash talk there. That'd, that'd be fun. Yeah, and the other night against San Diego State, we had, uh, you know, five African players combined, which is pretty cool. Oh, wow. what, what's it like with this group? Because every year you have to redo the best locker room in America with yeah. that group. Feels like you guys are super tight right now. You've had to overcome some adversity with no Richard Harward. But defensively, Gavin Baxter played one of his greatest games ever last night. Foose is coming along. Atiki's getting a few minutes here and there. Yeah, you know, it's the same message every year. You know, you got to put aside your own agenda, which is I think every guy on this team, it's it's a hard fight to fight, but being willing to put aside your own agenda, going into a game where you're on national television and you're playing the number 12 team in the country, to be able to do that, it's extremely hard. But the way that we did it last night and then kind of you saw everybody, I mean, through the, through the roster, everybody had a really great game. And it, it's just fun to be a part of a team that just is so willing to, to be able to fight that every single day, no matter how much attention we're getting, um, especially on the national scale right now. Just being willing to just put your agenda aside and, and fight and be present in the moment. That's one thing that Coach Pope told us in the locker room before the game. Be present. Like, don't, don't lose this moment that you have right now walking into this game. And I think everybody, you know, you, you look around the locker room, everybody was bought in and, and they were locked into the scout on that game. Well, and I know that every game is supposed to take you into the next one and you just keep building off of it and building off of it. How do you take what you guys did against a ranked team and playing so well? How do you build off that and just keep that momentum going heading into Central Methodist? I think we take what worked for us, which is, you know, defense. Defense is what worked for us. I mean, we held them to 40-some points. We were able to protect middle. We were able to crash the glass really hard, which uh, we got some really incredible incredible rebounders on this team that have helped us so much um, in these first three games. But take, taking that, because defense wins games at the end of the day, and that's what our coaches preached to us, and it's been working for us. We're 3-0, and and we're excited to keep this thing rolling. You haven't given up, uh, you know, 61 points to anybody, yet, <laughs> which is just incredible. Uh, considering you played three tournament teams, this is one of the tougher first three games for anybody in the country. Now you're going to have a target on your back next week. Uh, that's what happens when you beat the number 12 team by 32. Are you ready to be a top 20 team and have that kind of target from now on the rest of the season? Definitely. You've earned that, I suppose, right? Definitely. I, I think that's where we grow the most, you know, having that target on our back, knowing every single team that comes into into the Marriott Center when we're on the road, they're they're aiming for us. And we do have a huge target on our back right now, but we're willing to take that challenge, and it's, it's only going to make us better as this year goes on. Are you? Uh, we had mentioned that uh, right after the show, BYU women's basketball will uh, will be in action against Arizona State. Are you going to be uh, you going to be heading over and watching the women's basketball team, or do you have class today? Definitely, no. I'm gonna I'm gonna go check them out right now. What, what what's what's been the conversation with your sister, who obviously is on the team, and just that dynamic, having her here and you both in the programs. What what has that been like over the last couple months? Oh, it's it's been great. You know, we we live together, so we got a little bit of bickering going on <laughs> every night when we come home. But uh, it, it's just it's fun. You know, she's got a really competitive edge to her. Um, she's she's doing great in her classes right now, a lot smarter than me. You know, I think she's got straight A's across the board. But uh, it, it's fun just to be here with the, with your sibling and, and just to enjoy the moments that, that we get together and both playing basketball. It's, it's, it's really fun. That's pretty cool, man. Take me back to when some of your most frustrating, maybe even depressive moments at Arizona where you're like, I know that I can do more. Here you are now at BYU. You had one of your best showcases last night. Sean Farnham's like, if you didn't know Alex Farcella, you will now, right? <laughs> What's that like for you? Because I know that you've worked extremely hard to go from that situation to this situation, which has put you in a very different place, not only on the court, but in your life. 
Yeah, it, it was uh, – I actually thought about that during the game last night just because Oregon's a Pac-12 team, played in mm -hmm. the Pac-12, and, you know, they still have – the head coach uh, recruited me when I was in high school. One of their assistants recruited me. And, uh, you know, it, it was just – it was a good feeling to me just because I, I know the confidence that I have right now, um, the, the, the team that I have right now, the coaching staff, the, the university, the fan base, it's just a whole different feel to me. And to be able to, to have the opportunity that I have here at this university, to be able to, to play with a team that's so locked in and so together, um, to play for a coaching staff as just as personal and as great as they are and as smart as they are um, with their scouts, it, it was just such a great feeling. I'm like, wow, this, this really did a – a whole uh, a whole turnaround for me and, and I'm just so so blessed and to see you know we were, we were on the road but it felt like a home game just like Gavin's tweet that you guys threw up it uh, just the the support that we have across the country is unbelievable and I'm just so happy to be here at this university shout out to the 503 man and, and, <laughs> and the 360 who showed up from southwestern Washington I mean that was incredible well congratulations I know there's a lot of basketball still to be played but this was a huge win and you've come a long way uh, it's awesome to have you man Thank you. It's awesome to be here. Thanks for coming to the studio like, like eight hours after <laughs> yeah. you were at the I got like two hours of sleep, maybe. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. Thanks, guys. We'll be good. Thanks, guys. All right. Coming up, Paisley Harding previews today, win today's women's basketball matinee with our own Kristen Kozlowski. And it's Jeff Goodman overreacting to BYU's win last night. Do we even think it's too much? We'll discuss. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. BYU Food to Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food to Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. crack wash all you want don't drive dirty hey family if you're looking for something new to watch stop scrolling and start streaming BYU TV has a ton of great options to binge together from bold adventure to family drama and even a little fun there's something for everyone binge entire series experience all the feels immerse in non-stop entry and treat yourself to unexpected turns Think you know BYU TV? We're just getting started. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management. It's another Kalani Satake and Mark Pope combined coaches show tonight. Watch as Kalani talks about his team's prep for Georgia Southern, and Mark Pope recaps his team's game, his team's win over Oregon last night. You can watch it 8.30 tonight, Eastern Time, on the BYU TV app. And by the way, there are still seats available to those who are interested. You can check out Greg Rubel and or Jerem Jordan's Twitter for the link. Yeah, we'd love to have you if you're local and uh, want to be here. If and you're, you're hosting tonight, right? I am hosting tonight. Greg is headed to uh, Charlottesville, Virginia. And if BYU women's soccer, when BYU soccer Thank you, win. defeats Alabama tomorrow, you will head then to I'm Charlottesville. Then I'm flying out to Virginia Friday. Greg will do football. <laughs> And you will do soccer Saturday and Sweet 16, probably against Virginia. And then I will call And then you will call basketball, yeah. Crisscrossing uh, the country here. L listen, I'm the third string radio play-by-play. -play. It's only coming to play one time. This would be the second time on Saturday. Okay, he is Jason. I am Jerem. This is BYU Sports Nation. You can interact with the show. Follow BYU Sports Nation on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. 
The Cougar Whip Round is presented by Visible Supply Chain Management, tackling America's most challenging shipping problems. Okay, we mentioned this going into break. Uh, Jeff Goodman has BYU. <laughs> First of all, he came in yesterday with them at number 17. Super high. Yes. Well, yes. yes. Yeah. He now has BYU at number 8 in terms of his Goodman top 25. Is Jeff Goodman overreacting to the win? Yeah, uh, eight's pretty high. <laughs> Love the Cougs, but eight's high. Uh, I'd put BYU in the teens right now. Probably the mid to high teens, that's where I would, yeah. Yeah, I, it, I think it's too high, but I'd rather have him err on the side of being too high than too low. Oh, good. Yeah, I do not expect eight, but uh, I like the optimism. I'll Great. take that. G- Goodman, hey, if you're just going right now and not projecting at all, you're just like right now? Sure. Who BYU's played and how they've played? Yeah. Well, BYU football beat Georgia Southern by more than hoops beat Oregon. Oh, this is such a good question. Okay, here's, I'm going to let BYU basketball continue to bask. I'm going to say no. I don't think so either. I'm going to say that, I'm going to say basketball is going to hold that record with 32. The line is 20, by the way, for Georgia Southern. Look, and they're a triple option team. Well, used to be. They've changed since they fired their coach. But but they, they still run a lot of it. I watched the last game. They ran like... Six plays. So, yeah. but yes, yeah. it's yeah, I. I'm gonna I'm gonna let hoops have this one. I'm gonna say they're gonna keep that. That is a hilarious, hilarious question. Uh, Brandon Gurney <laughs> um, tweeted, "Wasn't this how the Cleveland State game was supposed to go? <laughs> <laughs> how BYU beats Oregon by more than they beat San Diego State? Just amazing. Oh my goodness. All right, which team? This is another good one. Like, let's just pit football against basketball. How about we do that for? Dived into the conversation. Love it. Which team will be ranked higher next week? Men's hoops or I was going to say men's football or football. I think it's women's football. <laughs> um, I think uh, football at 14 will yeah. be always going to win and be 14 or 13. But I think men, I think men's hoops, like we talked about, I'd probably put BYU at 18 or 19. You say 17. I say 17. I wouldn't be shocked if BYU is like suddenly 15th or 16th. But, yeah, I, I think it's football because I'm with you. Yeah. I think they either stay at 14 or they, they move up to 13. I would Hopeful. not expect I would not plus, expect a jump of two. Yeah. But who knows? You, you just never know, it's I guess. It's a stay or push plus one, it feels like. Right? Yeah. So I th- it's going to go football on that one. Okay. Um, somebody tweeted, uh, uh, you know, Shihan Jirarija. It's just one week, but it's kind of funny to think about the fact that the new Big 12 is set to add number five Cincinnati, number 14 BYU, number 24 Houston, to number nine Oklahoma State, number 11 Baylor, and only gives up number 13 Oklahoma in, the, in exchange. Did the new Big 12 win the trade with the SEC? I think if you ask the SEC, they probably would say yes. Because they're like, Texas. They're like, wait, wait, do we, did we sign that? Is the ink dry on that contract? We Texas? We meant Texas, TCU. <laughs> we meant Houston. <laughs> it's, yeah, the, the players to be named later were certainly good for the Big 12. Look, and that's what, that's one of the fun things about watching these football games and basketball games is national people on social media, whether it's on the broadcast as well, talking about BYU going to the Big 12 in football, basketball, and, and look at what the other teams that are going in and how how the Big 12 must be salivating to get these teams all ranked in the top 25 into the into the conference. That's what makes this even more sweet is just the conversation and the idea that, yeah, this is a reality. This is happening. I'm still in somewhat of denial with BYU in the Big 12 in an exciting way where I'm like, oh, yeah, that is happening. That's amazing. I keep waiting for somebody to just like, like they're gonna wake me up or something. I'm not on that level, <laughs> but, ju- but just on the the moment BYU like hosts Kansas at right. home in basketball, yeah. that'll be the yes. moment. Or first two years, say they don't leave the SEC, Oklahoma in Lavelle Edwards Stadium, it's like, oh my god, yeah, what? That's when it hits. Hosting Texas and beating Texas, that's a thing we're used to. Um, but it have to be someone else, yeah. All right, Cam Meller, our guy joins us on the show All quite right. a bit. Like Spencer's Dax Milne, my guy? <laughs> sure, why not? Yeah. Uh, Cam Meller has Jaron Hall ranked 12th in his FBS quarterback rankings. Do you feel that Hall is a top 15 quarterback in the FBS right now? He's not getting the love because the volume is a super high. Hasn't thrown for 2,000 yards or anything like that. Crazy, right? Um, like a Brennan Armstrong pops more than a Jaron Hall, per se. But you look at BYU's winning. You look at the Power 5 opponents. You look at the efficiency. Mm-hmm. Do you know that BYU's only thrown three picks all year as a team? That's insane. That's top 10 in the country. I would argue yes. The way B- BYU's ranked 14th, 5-1 uh, and one versus Power 5s, uh, yeah, he's the top 15 quarterback in the country, I think. I could see at least top 25, but yeah, let's go for top 15. I, I, I agree with you. The, the wins, the way they're winning, the opponents that they're beating, you mentioned the stats and the efficiency, and the fact that he is a dual threat guy that you know gets people's attention. Yes, he's a top 15 quarterback. Again, he probably needs some more stats to pop. 
but when you're... But you're right. He's not getting the love he probably deserves. Right. He should get more love. Cam Miller's always on it. He's a step ahead. He's good. Tom Homel tweeted last night after watching the BYU men's basketball game on the East Coast. He's probably with the soccer team, I assume. Okay. Uh, yeah, he is. Uh, okay, Southern, Eastern, and Midwest Cougs. I feel you. I'm in Virginia. Yep. Tonight for the Cougs NCAA women's soccer second round game. Watching BYU hoops win against Oregon on ESPN. I appreciate you even more for your commitment to watch BYU games played late in the West, and then it's a yawning emoji. <laughs> Does this mean Tom will push for earlier start times? Uh, no, because I think that was a selling point to the Big 12 <laughs> that will play late and you can get into that window. It's definitely not something Tom controls. <laughs> it not. is what uh, you know the TV partners will with ESPN and Fox for the t- first two years, and then we'll see where the Big 12 contract goes. But no, shout out to all of the East Coast and Central Time, you know, Eastern and Central Time Zone homies who watch. BYU. What about people in and Europe? In Europe, yeah. Let's not leave Liechtenstein out. Eastern Eastern Europe. No, insane, right? Asia. But if it goes to Asia, now it's Sunday morning. But then are they in the West, shirts. depending on how you look at it? Well, they're in the future, and then they're saying, "Here's what happened." <laughs> yeah, exactly. And as we know, the future is always positive. Yes, it is, Jason. <laughs> All right, coming up, we update the double down standings. Spoiler alert: somebody hit the bonus. I don't know what any of that means. I've got to be more aggressive. I think is what we learned. BYU looks to continue its Pac-12 dominance. Women's hoops host Arizona State coming up at the top of the hour in about 20 minutes. Paisley. Harding previews the matchup. This is BYU Sports Nation. Hey, Nick Mark. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. things happen to us sometimes but I have to believe that something good is gonna come out of this BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU store official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere Tomorrow, BYU women's soccer taking on Bama. We want Bama. BYU's getting them. BYU's getting them in the second round of the NCAA tournament. The voice of the Cougars, Greg Rubel, will have your live play-by-play on BYU radio locally on 107.9 FM, as well as BYUcougars.com at 4 Eastern time. That's right. ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus. Sync it up. Sync it up. That's That's right. That's good. Welcome back to BYU Sports Nation. Hey, BYU in the Big 12, uh, awesome. (laughs) BYU playing the Pac-12, also awesome. Women's Hoops coming up at the top of the hour in about 16 minutes and change right here on BYU TV for a preview of the game. Let's head over to the Marriott Center. Hello, everyone. Kristen Kozlowski joined by Paisley Harding from the women's basketball team. Now, Paisley, this is a team that is very experienced, went to the second round of the NCAA tournament a season ago. You had a free COVID eligibility year. What was your choice, that decision in coming back this year, and do you have some unfinished business? Um, I think coming back was a no-brainer. I love playing with these girls. I love playing for Jetty, for BYU. Um, my husband was going to play another year, so it just made sense for me to come back. Um, I do think we have unfinished business. 
I believe that we were a Elite Eight team last year. I think maybe we would have gotten there if I hadn't broken my hand. But um, I think this year we'll be able to make a deeper run, trying to win out and just play really good this uh, preseason. Now, as the media and announcers, we talk a lot about how hard it is to guard this BYU team. Offensively, through the first two games, you're averaging 80.5 points per game. Why do you think that is? What is it about this offense? Um, it's amazing. Everyone on my team can score. Everybody can score in different ways. We have Lauren, Emma, Sarah in the middle that can post up, make great uh, post moves in the post, and then you have a whole bunch of guards. Too many to count, too many to name that can just go and perform and make outside shots, make drives to the basket, make mid-range. It's just really fun to watch, and I don't know, it's hard to guard. You're taking on an Arizona State team that's out of the Pac-12 here today. Tough matchup early in the season. What has been your preparation for this team, the scouting report? What are you guys doing to take away some of the advantages that they might have? I think definitely our defense. we got to focus on that. We're taking, we're going to try to take them out of a whole bunch of different drives and kicks because that's what they mainly like to do. They're going to come off, drive to the basket, push in transition, and we're going to really focus on that today. Individually, I want to know what you're doing defensively. You're going to start out on Jade Lavelle, who's their top scorer coming into this game. She's a tough player, but I know you're just as tough. So what are you doing individually in your defensive scheme? Um, sometimes it's just a mindset for me on defense. Sometimes I got to just um, take the challenge. She's a really great player. She's going to hit a lot of mid-range shots. Today, I'm just going to try to limit those, get in her face, get in her grill, and not let her get anything easy. All right, so your husband plays D1. Who's the better player out of you two? Who's the better shooter? Let's talk about shooting. Connor is a really good shooter. Um, I think he's going to show it this year at UVU. But I have too much pride to say it's not me, so I would say me. Good answer. OK, and then last but not least, WCC play begins December 30th against San Diego. Already a tough game here in this one. How important is your schedule early preparing you for the WCC play? Um, our preseason is huge for us to get games that um, tough games that we don't necessarily get during the season just uh, to enhance our skills get ready for season but also have a good RPI to go into seating for the NCAA tournament these games really help us um, push forward in that and these are really important um, not only for that but to also like test our abilities so I'm excited to play a whole bunch of Pac-12 this preseason. Well, best of luck in that game. Coming up, Arizona State takes on BYU here at the Marriott Center. It's going to be a good one. Thank you. Kristen Kozlowski with Paisley Harding. Good stuff. When Paisley talks about she felt like last year was an Elite Eight good team if she didn't break her hand. By the way, she broke her hand in the first round and then played and they in continued the second to play. round against yes. Arizona with a broken hand, which is unbelievable. Arizona was the national runner-up. BYU feels like it's got a great team. They do. Six, The top six scores returned from a team that – Almost won the West Coast Conference title. Got buzzer beaten by Gonzaga. Slow trigger on the clock. <laughs> Not over it. And then uh, won in the NCAA tournament. This team's really good. They're, they're really good. As you mentioned, top six scorers coming back. You have all five starters from last year. Uh, you've got, look, Sarah Hampson, who's been the starting center for BYU women's basketball for the last couple of years, is coming off the bench. It's They've a got different look. Tegan Graham starting. Imagine... You, you see Sarah Hampson and her ability to rebound and block shots coming off the bench. This is a very confident team, and they have every reason to be confident. They are really, really good. And like she said, like Pacey said, they, this, is, this is a team that felt that they had more to give last year and are looking forward to that opportunity to prove it. 2-0, Arizona State coming up at the top of the hour on BYU TV. Boise State coming up Saturday afternoon. Utah State after that. And then listen to this. Uh, Florida State and then either West Virginia or Purdue. Utah, Oklahoma. Washington State, and then you round out with Montana State. Really tough non-conference schedule. And Juddy has done a really good job. He's been doing – this is not something new for him. He has always scheduled up. Always scheduled tough, Jeff. <laughs> So this is this is something that they try and do every year. And look, and this this is the way college basketball, both men's and women's, are going. The NCAA tournament committee they want to see that you're scheduling tough opponents in your non-conference. Yep. Because you obviously can't do you can't do with anything in terms of the conference opponents you play. Those are just who they are. Yes. But your non-conference you have control over to a certain degree. Some teams won't, don't want to play you if you're really good. But Juddy has always been that way, where they've scheduled up for non-conference, and it is a great way to prepare them for the WCC play. We knew this was the change when two years ago St. Mary's would actually leave California to play non-conference games. That's, in right. That's when it was like, oh, even Randy Bennett and company are doing it. So, yes, you are rewarded for strength of schedule. The latest edition, BYU and Arizona State, coming up top of the hour right here 
on BYU TV. Also coming up, Mark Pope takes over the elite tweet. Oh, snap. What did he tweet? And we recap our double down projections. This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Sam Ree. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift card, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with a free BYU TV app. I like it. This week, I'll be heading to Texas to meet Alyssa, Jessica, and their sweet dog, Penny. Penny chased a stray dog out into the street, and she was the one that was hit. She doesn't have the mobility that she should have. I have to transfer the motion from Penny's upper arm into the prosthetic, which means I have zero room for error in terms of fit. To see Penny take her first step was the most amazing thing I've ever witnessed in my life. To see her moving with this, yeah. that's near impossible. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. On the latest Deep Blue podcast, Jerem Jordan, hey, that's you, Hi. talks with BYU women's golf coach Carrie Roberts about the legacy of the Summer Hayes family in golf, the influence of her parents on her life, and the decision to abandon her husband's then recent law degree to return to BYU to coach the team. Listen to it on the BYU Radio app and where podcasts are found. BYU Sports Nation is always available on demand via the free, if you don't have them already, go ahead and download them, BYU TV and BYU Radio apps. Or download the podcast, of course. Okay, yeah. now time for the double down results from the game at Oregon. Don't know if you heard, BYU won by 32. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Standings going into yesterday. Somebody uh, that didn't watch it last night was like, like I was waiting till this morning to watch that game. I didn't know, but I watched BYU Sports Nation somehow. Uh, I had four points. Spencer had two going into yesterday. A reminder of how it works. You get two predictions. Both were one point. If you get both, you get an extra point for a total of three. Number one, I said BYU will cover the four-and-a-half-point spread. Yeah, that happened. Number two, uh, BYU yeah. won by 32. Two, the BYU bench will outscore Oregon's bench. Yep, 33 to six. So I wow. get three points on that. I probably need to be more aggressive there. I thought I was aggressive. BYU will cover? I thought that was aggressive. That, that was aggressive. Maybe I need to be more Little did we know BYU would dominate by 32. BYU didn't cover. BYU covered it and then covered that. That's crazy. Uh, that's, that is crazy. All right. Uh, this game will be decided by five or fewer points. Spencer's picks. Yeah, these are Spencer's picks, yeah. yes. This game will be decided by five or fewer points. It was. It was not. Uh, and then number two, BYU will score a season high of 70-plus points. They did, and then some obviously with 81, so one point for Spencer. And Dave McCann said Caleb Lunner recorded double-double. Nope, he had uh, two points, two boards. And two, if BYU wins the rebounding battle, they win the game. That's good. It's good! BYU out-rebounded Oregon 35-25. Updated standings, Yo 7, Spencer 3, and Guests 1. Okay. Well, we're not even giving people names. We're just calling them guests now? Yeah. <laughs> We've had two. We've had Tyler Haas and now Dave McCann. Dave McCann, our question of the day. Nick Lee on Twitter uh, in, in response to the question about what stuck out last night. All the ESPN stats and national recognition. Most of the country was watching, and BYU not only delivered but shocked the nation. I'm not sure everyone was watching. It was 10 p.m. on the East Coast. And doing they it in Oregon's watching. backyard was a nice touch. The national media were, I mean, like the average person. If we go and find the actual number of, that watched, it probably wasn't a huge number. But on ESPN, is always awesome. Um, it's, it's just tough when it's a 8 p.m. plus start 
uh, you know, it's it tough. is crazy when you think about it. We're so, first of all, we're so used to having the games that late anyway, whether it's football or basketball. Yeah, but, on the but West also, Coast, but we're, seven o'clock. But we live yeah. here, and so it just we never think. Oh yeah, these games are starting at ten thirty or eleven o'clock. Yeah, the people that Last live night, in New York, and you know, Virginia. Fifty percent. It's it's uh, you know the the. You know, the Europeans that came over to America, it's their fault that, you know, 50% of the population live in the Eastern Time. Are you blaming if the they colonists? Had, if they, yes, if they had come over on the West Side, I know it's a longer trip, then all the games would be earlier. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm saying. You, if, you're if just the pioneers, say, I know if, you're just saying. If but the pi- it's not a good reason to do anything. Look, if look, the pioneers had stayed in, uh, you know, uh, back east or in the Midwest, BYU might have been in the Big Ten or the Big Twelve earlier. Look, could have gone a little further, and we could be hanging out in Malibu doing this show. It's true. Brigham was asked about San Francisco. He said no. <laughs> Our elite voice of the day, presented by Sundance Mountain Resorts. It's in Saints Two, at Beta Turtle Twenty One. One day I'll get a tweet featured on BYU Sports Nation. And I'll only then be able to die happy. We don't want you to die. We don't want you to die. Yes, please don't. But whenever that happens. Now you can die happy, okay? Our rise and shout-outs are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics, and Alex Barcelo and Shaylee Gonzalez, if you watched social media yesterday. How about BYU hoops last night, obviously? <laughs> that's got to be that's got to be front and center <laughs> with what they did last night, knocking off the 12th-ranked team in just dominating fashion. All I can do is just laugh and smile because that was just a butt-kicking that was so interesting. And apparently Oregon was still talking trash down 20. That's amazing. I saw Trevin Nell get into it. Obviously, the we haven't mentioned this yet, but Isaac Johnson's the center, yes. a backup with Oregon, uh, return missionary from American Fork. He's at Oregon. Spencer's older brother is just kind of, you know, saying, ESPN showed a few moments where he was just saying stuff to his brother. That's good stuff. The parents had the half and half jerseys, by the way. Did they? Yeah. Yeah, they had the half, get, half duck, half cougar jerseys. I get the half and half of Panda Express as well. BYU dry cleaning. <laughs> Mark Pope took the suits to get cleaned. He tweeted, tough week on the suits, hashtag not complaining. That's amazing. I've been to that drive through Shout out to, uh, you know, BYU Laundry. They do an amazing job. They do job. an amazing job. They I've really... taken a couple of comforters there. Oh, yeah, they're amazing. They're amazing. That's free promotion. Sorry, you got to pay for that next time. And then we'll finish with this one. Uh, rise and shout out to our guy, Jack Troxel. He's 12 years old. He lives in Vancouver, Washington. He and his family, I talked to his uh, dad, Ryan, this morning. They went to the game. And uh, I believe that's uh, perhaps his mom holding the sign, taking a break from beating cancer, watch the Cougs play, go Cougs. He just finished his fifth round of chemo of six. He's also doing radiation. So shout out to our guy, Jack Troxel from Vancouver. Shout out to Vancouver. And, uh, you know, hang in there, buddy. You're going to be all right. We're with you on this. We'd love to have you in studio next time you're in town. Let's get you to a game. Let's get you to see BYU Sports Nation. Let us know, man, and uh, keep up the good fight, brother. Jack Troxel, our guy. I know Mark Pope and company reached out to him, wanted to make sure he was at the game. So uh, awesome to see Jack at the game, and uh, good luck with everything, man. Yeah, I, Brain I, cancer specifically, by yeah, the way. Yeah, absolutely. Hope everything really continues scary, really to go well. Stuff. You'll be all right, brother. Let's go. Okay, uh, our thanks to today's guests, Alex Barcelo and Paisley Harding. Conversation continues 24-7 on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Use the hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm uh, Jerem. Shout out to Ambrosia Anderson. Stay tuned for BYU and Arizona State Women's Hoops coming up on BYU TV. Oh, I got to go. Go Cougs. You got to go sideline this. Get out of here, man. See ya.